What's up guys, it's Punchy, and today we have a pretty fun Deep Woken update that brings forth some new content that we've never seen and some great changes to the old. I'm excited to get started, but don't forget to check out all the new stuff in-game for yourself. Anyway, let's begin. Starting off strong, a new weapon has been released unlike anything else that we've seen in Deep Woken. Introducing the game's first ever medium heavy hybrid, the Worm Tooth. This weapon's appearance is quite simple, but it's ridiculous length and range as a medium weapon makes this option absolutely peak. I mean seriously, look how long this sword is on the side of our character's hip. It's totally crazy. Anyway, this weapon has a multi-part critical alongside some very unique hybrid scaling. This sword is primarily medium, but you will need some heavy investment to equip and deal higher damage, but let's move on to the crit. The basic standing crit of this weapon is a piercing strike, a singular stab that pokes targets from range with some decent damage. Moving on, if you slide while critting, we instead have a radial slash that hits very low. Our sliding critical range is pretty sizable with some catching potential, and if you do hit a player with your crit, we can activate the secondary stab attack. If you slide, crit somebody, and spam M1 right after this, you will do the sweep crit and the stab crit, doing way more damage and sending people away. The inspiration for this weapon is very clearly the Naga Kiba from Elden Ring, and I hope you enjoy using it on your build. Another weapon has released this update alongside its alloyed counterpart as well, and yeah, it's pretty crazy. The Dawn Shot is a mid-level revolver that you should pick up after the Flintlock and before the Dragoon with a very cool 4-barrel design that we haven't seen before. Since it's just that cool, its alloy also released today if you want to pick this up for endgame usage. As always, the devs have cooked. Moving forward to something a bit more game-changing, it's time to talk about the major update to PvE or monster damage scaling. According to Deep Oaken Combat, the higher power you actually are, the more damage you deal to monsters. Regardless of your weapon investment, if you're a higher power, you're always going to be doing more damage than somebody that's lower. In this update, it's been changed a bit to assist players at lower levels while leaving power 20 unaffected. PvE scaling should ramp up less than before, letting weaker players speed up the monster hunting process, and I guess level 20s, you know, it's still the same. Besides this update to basic monster scaling, mantras in PvE and Chains of Perfection have been hit substantially hard with a few different nerfs. The talent, Chains of Perfection, is a multiplicative tool that grants damage against monsters if you hit them while parrying all their attacks. In this update, mantras can no longer add up Chains of Perfection and have reduced effectiveness against monsters to incentivize using weapons in PvE. Again, I want to clarify, they can use chains, but they do not add up the chains if you hit with a monster. Mantra. To balance out some monster interactions, the corrupted buff effect has now been lowered to a 2.5 times health multiplier instead of granting mobs 3 times HP, which was fairly annoying, I'm not gonna lie. It's definitely a smaller change, but I think it will affect how monster hunters play the game and min-max, you know, for optimal damage. Besides this, onto some, I guess, well-requested quality of life, uh, to be honest, I don't know who asked for this, but we have received some nice changes to boats and boat repair. If you didn't know, and I can't really blame you, boats with heavy damage are not doomed forever, but we can actually fix them using a repair hammer. Anyway, in this update, holding out a repair hammer will show you the health of whatever vessel you stand on and how much you're going to be repairing with a single hit. Alongside the visual, the repair hammer cooldown has been reduced while its repair speed jumps up, so it might be a better option to fix up boats at a faster speed. A pretty sick update to character customization is the new option to die out. Outfits. In game, with a single die packet, outfit colors are now customizable fully, allowing for creative cosplay builds and drip augments like never before. Besides this, there's a new die option that lets you individually customize the hair color of each equipped hair, meaning you can have a gradient color scheme or multicolor for each hair. It's also worth mentioning that you can now dye the slera of your eyes or the whites of your eyes. There's a numerous amount of options that you can cook up, but I'm just excited that it's here, so don't worry, I'll definitely definitely be using this on my character builds. On to some balance, because there's a few small adjustments that I need to talk about. Ping compensation, the delayed damage with higher lag has been reduced, providing less of a parry window with a whole lot less stun. Furthermore, this kicks in way earlier at about 70 ping, so compensation should be more subtle, assisting laggy players without destroying the flow of combat, which, you know, people were complaining about this. Besides this, lingering block frames have also been added 
added back into the game, which was removed last update. Also, these frames will go away if you end up rolling to prevent being block broken during a dodge, but you'll still take the damage. So right now, block frames are in a weird state, but we're getting there. Out of absolutely nowhere, Silent Heart players got hit with a giant nerf to their stats and passive effects, which is quite a shame. Silent Heart builds gain dread stacks, both increasing their monster resistance and buffing their damage output on M1s, but both of these have been nerfed today with a max cap to their potency, and that sucks. Before this update, Silent Hearts could get a max of 15% extra damage with full dread stacks, but this has fallen down to 10%. Also, Mantra Negation and Reduction maxed out at 25%, but that has also been dropped to 15%. Both of these basic multipliers were very passive and gained through basic parry trades, but it's a shame to see Silent Heart nerfs time and time again. In this update, it was revealed that the Rail Blade is no longer legendary, meaning it can be enchanted with basically anything, and that's pretty insane. Of course, this weapon stays pretty much the same with its special M1s, criticals, and now enchants, so this weapon is gonna be pretty fun. That's all for right now, so check out Battle Royale with your squad to finesse some wins. Thanks again for 80k subs, which is honestly crazy, and make sure to like and subscribe if you want more update content like this. Have a good one, it's punching time. Thank you